And so I read a book by D.T. Suzuki called The Training of a Zen Buddhist Monk, and I was amazed how similar that training was to our own. Merton put it later that the uh, the monastic calling is, is a an instinct of the human heart, that's how he put it. Um, and I wa was interested in meeting a, a Buddhist monk, uh, mildly interested, and then friends of mine arranged for me to meet uh, Edo Roshi, then Taisan, he was just a young young monk, was called Taisan, that come from uh, Japan via Hawaii to New York City, I had just established a zendo there, and we met, and uh, it clicked immediately, we just uh, uh, immediately spoke one another's language. Actually, we met in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art because uh, he said that was the only place he could find in New York City. He had just arrived, and I uh, thought we would have nothing to talk to one another, so we'd go to the museum and look at Asian art. But we never went into the museum. We just took one look at one another, and it was immediate understanding. It was just immediate uh, sympathy. And, and so we sat there on a bench, and we talked forever all afternoon. And the teach-in started to protest against the Vietnam War. And uh, I had been le uh, lecturing at the University of Michigan, where these teach-ins were invi invented. So for the second teach-in, they invited me. And I thought, oh, well, that would be a very good opportunity to come as a team for Vietnam, a Buddhist, and a Christian monk together. That would make a good story. So I invited this monk, who is now uh, Edo Roshi. At that time, he was just an unknown little Buddhist monk. I invited him to come along, and all his friends said, oh, no, uh, don't stick out your neck, they'll deport you, and so forth. And he was brave, brave enough to come and protest. And so we, we, we had to room together for a couple of days, and <coughs> in a real, very small room. And it was as if we had lived together for all our life. We were like two goldfish in a bowl, and whenever one turns left, the other one turns left. We, we just knew how to navigate together. And, we completely understood one another. Eventually, I invited Edo Oshi, uh, then Taisan, to come and visit the monastery, and he spent a few days with us and talked with the community. But it seemed to me that he, they asked him all the wrong questions and he gave all the wrong answers. They asked him these abstract questions and he gave his Zen answers. And uh, so I thought, well, that was the end of that project. But uh, uh, when he had left, uh, the community said unanimously, oh, well, uh, we didn't quite understand what he said, but that's not so important. Uh, the way he walks and the way he sits and the way he eats uh, is, is very convincing. This is a brother monk and you can go and join him. And so uh, two weeks later, I was down there in New York. At first, got permission for a year and then for another year and then for another year. So all together was about three years. So the Zen training is mostly sitting. Uh, <coughs> for uh, to be admitted to, to the Sahara for the summer, uh, we had to sit what is called tangario. Um, that means f for uh, if you stayed, for, I think it was if you stayed for one week, you had to sit for one day and two weeks, two days. Uh, for the whole summer, we had to sit five days. That meant we got up, I think, at 4:30 or 5 in the morning. And we sat, and we sat in the zendo, and we sat, and we sat, and we sat, and we ate in the zendo, and we uh, s sat there until 9 o'clock at night, uh, and then we uh, dragged ourselves to bed, and the next morning we sat again. And you sat there on your cushion, and the sun, uh, first it was dark, and then the sun came in through the, through the cracks from the left, and then uh, in the course of the day it came from this side, and in the evening it came from this side, and then it went, the light went out again, and we just sat and sat and sat with this. <laughs>